Especially uh, abusive and controlling spouses will try to convince their spouse that no outside help will help. Oh, if you go to them, they're going to do this and this and this, and this is going to happen, and that bad thing, and it's going to be all your fault. Okay, that's not true. Don't take responsibility for exposing error. This is an interesting question. My husband says he's a Christian, goes to church with me, puts on this Christian front in front of everyone. But when he gets home, he's a completely different person. Mm. He's verbally abusive. He's condescending. He's right. Um, he criticizes. Um, and the problem with this marriage is I, they have no one to talk to. I can't go to the pastor. I can't go to the friends. And that seems to be a theme through this. Like these women don't have anyone to talk to. <clears throat> Yeah. So, okay, you can answer that. So on the outset, I'm going to trust that this description is totally accurate, right. and nor would it help me to, to guess at any inaccuracies there. So that scenario is really tough. Um, here's a, a, a three-step plan. Here's a Christian value that people don't realize is in marriages, is the value of confronting people who sin against you and involving the community when it, when it doesn't work. There's a Christian value people don't generally talk about, but it's actually biblical. Jesus tells us to do it. So Matthew right. 18, I'll just read a few verses here. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you've gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you that, ev that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and tax collector. So step one, tell your husband. Now, probably this has already happened, but let's just say start with step one. It may have already happened there. But you tell your husband. And this is not just a sudden dumping of complaints because if, if frustration is the trigger that causes you to tell people about the harm they cause you, it w you'll do it wrong. So you got to do it when you're calm, when you're measured, when you've thought about what, what's worth saying here. Because if you do the dumping thing, and here over in our entire relationship are all the things you do, and you start using phrases like, you always do that. And it's something they do, like maybe they even do it every day, but do they always do it? <laughs> you always contradict me, always. So like you wait, you're like, good morning. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I always contradict. So once we start exaggerating, they think that your, their, your statements aren't believable, so then they don't hear your criticisms because you're kind of lying about them, even though you have real criticisms, but you've, you, spat out, you spat them out like magnified so much that they come off sounding like they're not true and then you guys can't reconcile. So deal with it accurately, of course. Um, so set a stage, you know, find a time and place where you guys can talk. And there are some things that are heavy on my heart that I want to share with you. And here's what I would consider asking, if you, especially if you've already talked about it before, is will you, will you let me talk for a little bit and just hear me out, and then I want to listen to how you respond. You could even try writing a letter. Honey, I wrote this down for you because I wasn't sure I would say it right. Would you mind reading it while I just, I'll just sit here and then I'll listen to what you have to say. When you tell them, like, I'm going to stop it, I'm going to give you the stage, the mic, that gives them more of a willingness, hopefully, to listen and consider those things. Um, always check yourself first. Galatians 6.1 says, if anyone's caught in a transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Spirit of gentleness, right? Like, Sean's, like, really good like that. You're just, like, you just naturally come off, like, oh, I'm so gentle, you know? Like, he does. I know. A good, you it's a good quality. Did. It's a good quality. <laughs> it is. I guess not while you're playing basketball, probably. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, um... That's a good thing, though, for us to do. And then be open and honest. You know, make it clear you want healing. So, like, you could say to your husband, hey, you're my husband and I love you and I want, I want this marriage to get better. I'm committed to it. But right now it's hurting me and I'm going to ask you to make some changes. That's so different than just complaining. So, like, you're setting a stage of restoration, which is the context of Matthew 18. So go one-on-one. -on -one. Step two, and this is probably where this person's actually at now, you bring it to other believers. You say, I can't go to the church. Why not? It'll be embarrassing. He won't like it. He'll get upset. That's okay. That's all right. Why can't you go to the church? Right. Now, bringing things to the church can go wrong, so let me say a few things. Don't assume nobody will believe you, especially uh, abusive and controlling spouses will try to convince their spouse that no outside help will help. Oh, if you go to them, they're going to do this and this and this, and this is going to happen, and that bad thing, and it's going to be all your fault. Okay, that's not true. Don't take responsibility for exposing error. The error causes the problems. The exposing of the error is not the guilt. It's not the person. This is doing youth ministry. Every, it, there are a handful of times where I dealt with abuse in families. And kids always, always, always thought, I can't tell anybody because they'll break up my family. I can't tell anybody because my dad will lose his job. I can't tell anybody because bad things will happen and it'll be my fault. Mm -hmm. And it was never true. It was never true. So I would say, yeah, 
go ahead, this is part of the reason, but my husband will be horribly embarrassed and horrified. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's part of the correction, right. is that it's being exposed. Like that's not a bad thing exactly. There's a good time to do that. That's why Jesus says, take two or three others along with you. So you bring just two or three. Um, another thing I'd say is, um, don't just go anywhere in the church or to anyone in the church. Choose wisely, godly and wise counselors, two or three. This brings wisdom. They don't have to be pastors, just wise people in the fellowship. That's it. Um, why? Because he's ignored you, and this brings weight. Now, you may be exposed too, so be open to that. Hey, I might be corrected too. I'm not going to like it, but I'll listen. So here's some tips on how. Ask them. Go to the people who you think won't listen to you, and you say this. I'm having some significant problems in my marriage, and I want to ask you for help are you willing to hear me out? Set the stage that way. Start by explaining first that your husband is different in private than he is in public because otherwise they'll have a hard time believing what you say about private because they see his public image. So that's the first thing you say. I know you see him as this guy here at church, but he acts very differently at home. And then they go, oh, really? Now they're open. Now it doesn't seem unbelievable. Try to be calm because if you're emotional, even if you're rightly emotional, they may think that you're not being real or that you're exaggerating. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, women who experience abuse look like a basket case to everybody because they've been experiencing abuse. Mm -hmm. But then women who are exaggerating their abuse look the same way. And so initially, it's difficult to tell what you're dealing with when you counsel with people. You yeah. have to kind of listen and dig and ask for examples. And that's why my, my last piece of advice is this. When you go to these extra people, bring multiple, very specific examples of times where extreme verbal abuse is happening in the home. I mean word for word. This was happening, he said this phrase to me. Because if you just use sweeping statements, he's verbally abusive, that doesn't give them something to grab onto to, to be able to get in your defense in your corner. Um, bring, uh, be ready to be confronted with it as well. But multiple specific examples of you not having input, of you getting that sort of thing, that's really helpful too. Um, step three, if this doesn't work with two or three, you go to the leadership of the church, assuming it's a healthy church. Um, and if that still won't be dealt with, that's when you can treat that husband like an unbeliever, which means... First Peter 3, you still love him, you still respect him, you still try to make your part work, but you did the godly thing. So I think this is something that's actually, people complain about abuse happening in Christian marriages and Christian stuff. I'm like, well, imagine how much of that would be curbed if we followed these rules. They're not comfortable, but neither is being yelled and cussed at by your spouse all the time.